Hello, and welcome to my channel where I mostly share my love of fragrance and enjoying my collection. In this video, I'm going to share and review my entire Van Cleef & Arpels collection, as well as some tips on how to get them for cheaper prices. Thanks so much for stopping by, and let's go ahead and get started. So if you're not familiar with Van Cleef & Arpels, it's a luxury jewelry brand from France that also has several perfume lines. They're a newer discovery for me. I first tried the brand last year, and I quickly fell in love with some of their scents. Van Cleef does have some mid-range lines called First, Fury, and Rev, and I haven't had a chance to try those yet. I currently have 11 fragrances, and they're all from the collection Extraordinaire, which is their higher-end line. You might look at the prices of this line, which average mid-200s and up, and think it's just crazy, um, and I agree. But a good tip I have is to actually look for these on discount retailers. I have never paid the full retail price or anywhere near it for any of my bottles. And even though this is more of a cross between a niche and designer brand, I feel like I am always able to get them for designer level and even verging on affordable prices. Um, FragranceNet and FragranceBuy are your friends here, so definitely check them out for Van Cleef & Arpels offerings. So the Collection Extraordinaire was launched in 2009, and from what I can tell, it has four different types of bottles. The clear bottles were from the original launch, and to me, they seem to be more lighter feminine scents, but I definitely think there isn't a hard and fast rule on what bottles go with which scents. Personally, I prefer the clear bottles because I like to see the juice and see how much I have left. Um, then they released um, a bunch of fragrances in plain black bottles. And following that, they came out with some white bottles like for Santal Blanc and Oud Blanc. And these all seem to be priced the same as the clear bottles. Then most recently, they came out with black textured bottles like Rev d'Ensemble and Rev de Cashmere, but I don't have any of those, but I do know that this line is more expensive. I'm not sure if it's because it has an intense concentration or not. Um, the, those bottles are absolutely beautiful, uh, but too pricey for me until I can find a good deal. So let's go ahead and get into the reviews. I'm going to review them in order of release and we'll recap my top favorites at the end. For reference, all of my bottles are 2.5 ounces and this here is what the packaging for the bottles looks like. It comes in a nice heavy cardboard box with the perfume nestled inside um, and I think it's overall a very nice presentation. So first up is Bois de Ris and this was released in 2009 with the original launch. And this one has notes of iris, driftwood, vanilla, incense, myrrh, sugar, amber, ambergris, vetiver, and French labdanum. And this scent opens with a very actually kind of cool feeling and starts to turn into a powdery sweet floral with incense. The vanilla and the sugar give it a nice sweetness, but it has a really warm spicy quality with a little woodiness. Um, to me, this is a very cozy scent, something you'd wear, you know, bundled up by the fireplace. Next up is Orchidée Vigny, and this was also released in 2009 with the original launch. And this one has notes of vanilla, dark chocolate, vanilla orchid, tonka bean, bitter almond, mandarin orange, violet, white musk, lychee, cedar, and Bulgarian rose. Now this is probably the most popular well-known fragrance in the line and I want to note that when I first spray this one there's actually something in the opening that I really don't like. I don't know what it is. It's sort of like a weird mustiness but it really only lasts a few moments so I'm willing to put up with it. Um, it's actually very similar to the opening of Anique Goutal's Nuit et Confidence um, that has a kind of a similar weird uh, scent when you first spray it. But luckily um, that weirdness goes away and then a really strong vanilla takes over and it has a really sweet marshmallow quality to it. Um, it's really nice. Um, the orange and the chocolate start to come in, but very subtly, and as well as a hint of soft floral. In the dry down, it just turns into pure, delicious vanilla sweetness with just a little hint of almond, and it's absolutely beautiful. If you enjoy warm, sweet gourmand scents with a little bit of powderiness, then this one is definitely for you. Um, overall, I think it has good lasting power, but not really huge projection. And next up is Precious Oud, and this was released in 2011. And this one has top notes of pink pepper and bergamot, middle notes of tuberose, incense, and jasmine, and base notes of agarwood or oud, sandalwood, patchouli, ambergris, and vetiver. 
And this one opens up very spicy and citrusy before the florals really start to come in. Um, there's a hint of that kind of bubblegummy scent from the tuberose. And I don't think this is overwhelmingly an oud fragrance, even though it's in the name. Um, to me, it's mostly a slightly sweet floral with a little bit of incense. And overall, it has a bit of kind of a dark, uh, sexy quality, um, but I think it's a really nice floral scent. Next up is California Reverie, and this was released in 2014. And this was marketed as a women's scent. And this one has top notes of neroli and mandarin orange, mid notes of jasmine sandback and frangipani, and base notes of beeswax and vanilla. And this one opens with strong neroli and orange, and then the florals start to come in. I really like frangipani, so I like that it's detectable in the scent as well as the jasmine. And when this dries down, there's a little bit of sweetness coming in from the honeyed base, as well as the vanilla, which gives it a little creaminess. Um, I can't pick out the vanilla um, too much. You can just kind of tell an overall uh, sweetness. And the standout note throughout the scent is really the neroli. Um, like a lot of citrusy scents, this doesn't have exceptional longevity, so you will have to reapply throughout the day. Um, but I don't mind because I think this is one of my most beautiful citrus fragrances. I really feel like that soft honeyed base um, gives it a little bit of something different um, and makes it a little more elevated than the typical citrus scent. Next up is Ombre Imperial, and this was released in 2015. And this has top notes of pink pepper and bergamot, mid notes of amber, tonka bean, vanilla, and benzoin, and a base note of woodsy notes. And this opens very spicy and peppery. Um, but then it starts to slowly smell more like holiday spices versus uh, pepper, um, kind of like cloves with a tiny hint of citrus. And then the amber, benzoin, and woodsy notes really start to become more prominent and the tonka bean and the vanilla give it a soft sweetness. Um, but to me, this mostly smells like kind of a deep resinous amber scent. Um, to me, it's very fall, winter, um, very cozy and warm with kind of a hint of smoky woods. Um, I think this is a great unisex scent. So next up is Moonlight Patchouli, and this was released in 2016. And this has top notes of patchouli leaf, cacao, and woodsy notes, mid notes of Bulgarian rose and iris flower, and base notes of suede, leather, and fruity notes. And this opens up with strong patchouli. Um, it's very herbal, and luckily it doesn't last too long. Um, it starts to fade and become less herbal and a little bit more sweet. Um, I think that cacao starts to give it a hint of that gourmand sweetness. And then the rose really starts to come out along with kind of a generic fruity note. And it starts to soften as it dries down, becoming a little bit powdery from the iris, but you can definitely still smell some of that rose. And I don't find the suede or leather to be too too prominent, which is good in my opinion. Um, it really just seems um, kind of woody in the base. Um, overall, you know, this is a, a nice um, kind of floral woody scent with a little hint of, you know, kind of powderiness. Um, but I do feel like this is the most masculine in the line. And next up is Bois Doré, and this was released in 2017. And this has top notes of mineral notes and black pepper, mid notes of vanilla, almond, tobacco, and cedar, and base notes of tonka bean, teakwood, and musk. And oh my goodness, when you first spray this, it is amazing sweet almond. Um, I don't get a lot of that black pepper, but I do get a general sense of spiciness. And I feel like the mineral notes are giving it sort of a, like a bright effervescent quality. And this dries down to a, just a beautiful, sweet, woody vanilla, um, a little bit creamy and heavy on the almond. It's really feminine and delicious. And I absolutely love this one. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Next up is Neroli Amara, and this was released in 2018. And this one has top notes of mandarin orange, bergamot, Italian lemon, and pink pepper, mid notes of orange blossom, cypress, pear, and black pepper, and base notes of neroli and white musk. And this one opens with a strong citrus and a hint of spiciness from the pepper. And then the orange blossom starts to come in and soften it. And I also smell a bit of the pear in that middle. And when it dries down, it becomes a nice musky neroli scent. Um, kind of soft, not really sweet, but also not bitter. Um, there's kind of a sharp freshness um, from the citrus overall. And this doesn't have the honeyed sweetness of California Reverie. So I do prefer that if I had to pick a neroli scent, um, but this 
This is still a very nice one if you want more of a straight uh, citrus scent with just a little muskiness and not so much um, a, a sweet scent. Then we have Rose Rouge, and this was released in 2018. And this one has top notes of blackcurrant, pink pepper, and bergamot, mid notes of rose and raspberry, and base notes of cacao pod, vanilla, patchouli, benzoin, verver, and musk. And this is the second rose fragrance in the line. They used to have a scent called Rose Velours, which I believe is replaced, but they're not actually the same scent. And Rose Rouge opens with strong, dewy rose and a little bit of sharpness, probably a mix of the pink pepper and bergamot. And then the scent starts to become less green and the raspberry really starts to come in. And ultimately this dries down to be a sweet, jammy rose. It is really beautiful. And unfortunately, from what I can tell, this scent has actually been discontinued. Um, so I already had to go and buy a backup um, because I don't want to be without it. Um, this scent is very reminiscent of a couple Maison Lancome scents, um, Roses Berberanza and Parfait de Roses. So if you like, you know, sweet, jammy rose scents, um, this definitely I think would be worth picking up. It also has a very, very slight uh, boozy quality to it, even though there's no uh, booze notes listed. And, you know, I this is really in the vein of scents that I like, you know, deep, dark roses with some sweetness to them, um, sometimes saffron. So I really enjoy this one. And next up is Bois de Monde, and this was released in 2020 for women and men. And this one has top notes of almond and lemon, mid note of Virginia cedar, and base notes of vanilla and musk. And this opens up with nice bright lemon and a sweet almond. It has a creaminess to it and smells really edible, sort of like marzipan. And as it starts to dry, the woodiness uh, really starts to come in. And to me, this is not a very complex scent. It really smells like a creamy almond with a little bit of sweet vanilla over a woody base. The lemon pr becomes less prominent over time. Um, and overall, this scent is just really lovely. Um, it's delicious smelling. Um, and I really enjoy this one. And the last fragrance that I have is Orchid Leather, and this was just released in 2021, and it's for women and men. And this one has notes of vanilla absolute, incense, plum, labdanum, and cardamom. And this is a really dark, incense-heavy scent. It smells boozy, um, kind of like a plum liqueur, and the vanilla gives it a really nice sweetness um, that contrasts with the spicy incense and cardamom. I really do like this one. I think it's very different from a lot of the other fragrances I own. It's really a good scent for a night out. And despite the name, I actually don't get a ton of leather, which I like. Um, but in the dry down, you do get some, some bit of kind of like leather feeling. Um, with a kind of smokiness, but it's definitely not, you know, super heavy leather because I would not enjoy that. Um, this is the newest one to my collection, so I'm still kind of playing with it, um, learning how it wears on me. Um, but, you know, as a first impression, I really do like this one. I think it's different and I like that really dark, uh, boozy, warm quality to it. So I'll wrap up by giving you my top favorites. In fifth place is Bois de Monde. It's just a lovely, creamy lemon and almond scent, uh, really bright and fresh, and uh, I really enjoy it. And then in fourth place is Bois de Ray. It's a sweet, woody vanilla, also with a hint of almond and just beautiful, I think, for all occasions. And then in third place is California Reverie. It's a bright citrus, and I just love the neroli with that sweet honeyed base. It really elevates it from your traditional uh, summer citrus scent. And then in second place is Orchidea Vini. Um, it's such a beautiful gourmand, uh, sweet vanilla with hints of orange and chocolate. And it's just uh, one of the most beautifully done uh, vanilla scents that I have. And finally, in first place is Rose Rouge. And I just love sweet, jammy rose scents with a, a fruity, boozy quality. And I think that this one is just done wonderfully. And overall, you know, there's so many standouts in the line. Um, these happen to be my personal five favorites, but I definitely love some of the other scents I showed you as well. So that's it for my review of my Van Cleef & Arbels collection. I hope you enjoyed watching and let me know which of these scents you're interested in trying or which ones are your favorites. Overall, I really enjoy this line. I think they have some really great scents and if you can find these for a good deal um, at some of those sites I mentioned, then I definitely think they're worth picking up. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you'll subscribe and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Thank you.